Do bugs make your skin crawl? If so, then you might not want to watch this next segment. But then again, you might find a new appreciation for insects after listening to etymologist Shepard Myers. Hi, I'm Shepard Myers. I'm the Collections Manager for the Bishop Museum's Department of Entomology. So we're here in one of the largest collections in the United States. It's ranked third based on its current estimates and approximately fifth to eighth in the world depending on um, another set of estimates. There's an estimated 14 million specimens and it's tricky to actually get a sense of how many there are without physically hand counting them. So a lot of this is done over the decades with doing inventory or surveys of various parts of the Pacific. I'm actually from a very a, a small rural community in New York State, a village about 600 people in a dairy farm country in, in western New York. So originally I had spent my time walking creek beds, flipping rocks, uh, looking for worms, looking for insects. I like to illustrate, I like to draw, so from there I sort of found insects as a gateway to get into Cornell, and Cornell has an excellent entomology program. I think one of the only ones that's still intact is a unit in the entire world. And so from there, it's, it's sort of progressed into collections works. I'm actually dyslexic, so by sketching in class, by doodling, by drawing constantly, I was able to always get through stuff. My notes sometimes are diagrams or schematics versus actually taking notes. Uh, so teachers actually learned that along the way, I was allowed to actually sketch in class and draw and not get you know, oh, you're distracting, oh, you're, you're not paying attention. So um, it's, I, I feel it's sort of intuitive and something that I enjoy doing. And so to actually combine the two fields and discover that entomology, that the research entomologists that are publishing new uh, species descriptions of new animals or new discoveries, they do a lot of the illustrations themselves, the diagnostic features, how many leg hairs they have, the reproductive organs are, are unique. And so they illustrate that. And so, once I discovered that, that's really pulled me towards entomology as a, as a professional field where I could apply the, the knowledge and, and the, the joy I have of being creative or drawing. Um, I found that also crop and soil sciences was fascinating, the application of how the insects eat crops and all that stuff. Typically people are mortified of insects because it, they're associated with mosquitoes, cockroaches, potentially vectors of disease, and rightfully so. But you have to remember that insects are extremely beneficial because they also pollinate the majority of the foods that we eat. So they're, it's, it's very much a yin and yang. They're as, they're as detrimental as they are beneficial. And also that insects really are the most dominant organism or group of organisms on the planet. So we cannot exist without them. But the smaller they are, the more tedious they are to work with. So th this is ad these are abnormally big. Most things are gonna be a centimeter or smaller. And so, the majority of stuff that is in these collection is really tiny. And most of the work has to be done through a microscope just to look at it. So as, as a kid, my dad used to, to tease us that there was a giant cricket that would potentially come and get us, or you could, he could see up on the hill and that we couldn't see it. And so what the exhibit really does is it, it captures the imagination of kids and showing them the ones that have gotten into popular culture. Uh, army ants, which people hear stuff about kissing bugs, the, the, the fear of having something come up and bite your face while you're sleeping, or uh, giant centipedes, you know, as people in Hawaii have a relationship with the, the giant six-inch scoliopendrids, you know, that's kind of a folklore behind those. Um, there's giant scorpions, there's whiptail spiders, uh, bees for pollinating. So I think the exhibit really showcases the ones that have a role in popular culture and, and people can get close to these giant animals and see what they would be. The insect exhibit that we have originally came from the Brookfield Zoo. It's a traveling exhibit. It'll be up until March 31st. March 17th, many of the scientists and some of the other collections managers will be available to a meet and greet. You can come and see some of these specimens. We'll be having uh, activities for the kids and we'll chance to see examples of the real specimens that are explained in that ex exhibit. So we'll have that stuff available March 17th as a uh, Science Alive. I think in terms of career potentials, there's, there's, there's applied and then there's theoretical. This is um, really more of a theoretical science where you're dealing at evolutionary relationships between animals. You're looking at the past, you're looking at the future. People that want to go and look at so insects' relationships to crops, IPM or integrated pest management is a huge field, often one that's not really covered in the media. So it's looking at biological, chemical, and mechanical controls to control populations and optimize yields. So though, though it's, there's every one of those individual segments is me mechanical controls as a career. Um, biochemistry or toxicology is a career. Biotech companies are getting more and more involved with gene patenting. There's more and more roles for geneticists to uh, work and provide new strains or new varieties of plants that express toxins or plants that are more resilient to drought, plants that can grow in tighter rows, so in how insects fit into those paradigms. So there's a huge, it's, it's 
I, I think professionally there's a lot of opportunities as long as you stay close to agriculture. Later we'll show you what's new at their planetarium. It's literally out of this world. So don't change that channel.